So this is called, this is a name for that. Whatever I am describing, it is called, okay, these are some statements, examples for uh, where this, where this limitation actually showed up. Some examples for that. You know, you all, one minute, you all uh, uh, use this word energy, energy a lot. And because you use it a lot, you think you know what it is. Meaning you start thinking, uh, energy, energy, energy. You know, you think you start thinking, you know what it is. Now here is again the same man, Richard Feynman, talking about energy. In the conservation of energy, we have a number which is not changed in time, but this number does not represent any particular thing. Even I saw very recently what uh, there was some BBC documentary on uh, the universe something and one of the modern scientists was part of that, he was a narration, he was the narrator of that and there was a small 5 minute, 10 minute <coughs> part in that where he described energy is a mysterious entity, we don't know what it is. We just know that it is conserved but it's mysterious. In fact, we have not even explored how, in what all ways energy behaves also is not explored fully. How of the energy is also not fully explored. What is a different question, what is anyway cannot be resolved. How part, the how question, how energy behaves and what all things of energy is also not completely resolved. That's why I wrote in the way page material, do you remember what I did, wrote about energy? In the Pranamaya Kosha, yeah. I, for prana, I wrote that instead of making prana into some kind, new kind of energy, vital energy, vital energy, and then getting into the trap of getting, uh, having to prove it, you attack this concept of energy itself. Do you know energy fully? What if energy itself, whatever you are calling as energy, energy, what if that itself is prana? What if you explore energy fully, how, how, in what all ways it behaves? That itself can be upgraded into prana. You don't have to bring in some new kind of energy. So energy itself is not fully known. So in this, he is simply highlighting that conservation of energy, we just know something is conserved. We don't know. Some, it's not a thing. Similarly, uh, this is a statement from, it's in his book only. Time is, God knows, heaven knows what, we don't know what it is. You can describe it, describe it in so many ways. Ultimately, you have to accept, I don't know what it is. This I will come to it later. World of Shadows, why that word is used. Now, this is my favorite. I quote this many times. Read that. You uh, still remember the, listening to that word in my 10th standard science. It was state syllabus only, so we studied in 10th standard. If you did CBSE, probably you heard it earlier. This word photon we heard first time in 10th standard. So when we were asking the teacher, what is it? It is packets of light, packets of light, packets of energy, this and that. But we were not satisfied at that time. The, intellect was fresh and it was not settling for answers. But now if you tell somebody, if you ask, what is light quantum? It is packets of energy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Understood. So now, here Einstein is, he was, actually he was the one who proposed, yesterday I was telling that Einstein got Nobel Prize for photoelectric effect. It was the first paper in which this light quanta concept was proposed. Einstein was the one who proposed it and he's telling, I don't know what it is. Einstein was the one who proposed this concept of light quanta, photons, later photons word came. He was the one who gave that word, uh, that theory. <coughs> and he, that came up in, the, he explained that in 1906 and he got even Nobel Prize for that. And after 50 years in 1950s sometime, he's uttering that. 
He's telling all these modern people who are passing out of college, they think what is light quantum. I don't know. They think they know. It's like a punch dialogue. One of my favorites. Here, one, uh, one of the prominent scientists, Indian-American, E.C.G. Sudarshan, have you heard of him? He's from Kerala. Now he's settled in the U.S. He teaches uh, somewhere. He's now quite elderly, I think. He's retired. He has come, he used to come here. I have met him also. So even he was telling something similar. All these uh, modern physicists, youngsters, they talk of all this string theory, multi, M, this and that. If you ask them why the ice melts, they don't know. <laughs> he was telling. Why, why the ice melts and becomes water and that uh, melting point and whatever. That they don't know. They know string theory. All this. He was also making fun of that. So this limitation, it is called as non-reductivity. This is a technical term. You can see in the book, you will find it. This is called non-reductivity, meaning you cannot reduce it further. In the first, do you remember this word I used here? I used reducibility. Reducibility means you reduce A to B. You tell that A is made up of B. So you have reduced A to B. If you ask what is B, you say it is made up of C. You have reduced B to C. That is called reduce, reducing it. Reducing not, not, doesn't, make, doesn't mean making it less. That is how they use the word, don't get confused. Okay, reducing doesn't mean reducing and making it less. Reducing means changing from A to B, answering that A is made up of B. It is reducing A to B. It's how they use, I don't know why they use like that. Don't get confused. Okay, are you clear? So we do reducing, reducing, reducing. And in the end, you will hit a dead end. You cannot go beyond. And that is called non-reductivity. You cannot reduce further. Non-reducibility or non-reductivity. It's a dead end. You cannot cross it. Using definitions, you cannot cross it. Because definitions have to be circular only, necessarily. So this is another major limitation of science. When you do science, objectively define things, you have to hit a dead end. You cannot define energy, you cannot define space-time, you cannot define charge. You can, you can explain how they behave, you cannot define them as such. Now, then why is it that we, it never occurs to us? It's a very simple thing actually, whatever I told now is actually a very simple thing. It should have occurred to you that it is finally circular. The what question cannot be answered. But why is it that we start thinking we are explaining it? Why is it that we go into that delusion? This is a thought experiment. This thought experiment was told for some other reason in the 1982 or something. But you, it applies to whatever I am telling also. It was told by one of the psychologists in the US, John Charlie or his name, or something. And uh, he gave a thought experiment. It's called Chinese Room Experiment. Chinese Room Thought Experiment. What that does is, the description is in the picture itself. There is a man inside a room and there is a window or some screen which gives input. And there is a slot where, it, where an output can be given. And the job of that person is to do Chinese to Chinese translation. Okay. He is basically doing a Chinese to Chinese dictionary job. So he has a Chinese dictionary with him. Some input will be shown on the screen. Some Chinese symbol will be shown to him. He doesn't know Chinese. He is not a Chinese man. He doesn't know Chinese. He only recognizes the symbol. He sees the symbol on the screen. He looks into the dictionary and on the left hand side of the dictionary he searches for that symbol. When he finds that symbol, he will tell what is on the other side. The meaning in Chinese is also again a Chinese symbol. That he will write in a paper and give as output. Understood? The person doesn't know Chinese. He is simply telling what symbol is matching with what symbol in, on the book. 
Now, if he does this, initially he may take a long time to even uh, you know, find out one symbol. If he does this for a long time, he will become very proficient with it. As soon as he sees the symbol, he will know on which page it is and he will give it very quickly. So, if you, if he works like that for many years and if you start getting the output very quickly, do you mean to say he has learnt Chinese? Do you mean to say he is understanding the words? He is not. He is only becoming very efficient in processing the symbols. As soon as he sees this symbol, probably he will become so efficient that he doesn't even have to look at the book. He will himself write what the meaning is. He won't know what it represents, but he will write a symbol and give it. So you will think that the man inside the room, room knows Chinese. Yes. But the man doesn't know anything. He's just replacing one symbol with another symbol. That's all he's doing. And that may give you the impression that there, there is some knowledgeable man there. That is what we do in lectures also. <laughs> we just replace one word with another word and you think we know things. Basically, it is finally word game. We are just... <laughs> We are just, when you ask what is this, we tell what oh, that is this. You say ho oh, and you will go away. <laughs> we are just, everyone is finally somebody in Chinese room. I will explain this further. <clears throat> so this is why, because we process the words a lot of times, we start thinking we know what it is. Consciousness, awareness, mind, forget consciousness, mind itself, do you know what it is? <laughs> Matter itself, do you know what it is? You know how to use matter, you know what all it does, do you know what it is fundamentally? 